And, you know, last week, Book Passage did a Pride panel, and it was a group of astounding folks on it, um, including P. Carl, who wrote Becoming a Man. I don't know if you've heard yeah. of, yep. of him. And he said, as a trans person, I spent most of my life with my head in a book imagining other lives, other bodies, other histories. Sometimes it was a, to dream myself a cowboy on an open prairie, sometimes a priest giving other men hope of a God on the other side. I thought, oh, this is so, this is, I got to bring this up to Paula, you know, because your struggles felt so similar here. And uh, the profound constraints, and let's get to that, of the evangelical world that you lived in from, well, from very early on within your family and in your community, but then took it on as your profession. And I'd love for you to talk about your these, this daily agony and contradictions of this conservative entwined doctrine that excluded LGBTQ people and women in general. You know, one of the problems with particularly the conservative forms of the desert religions, so all three desert religions that are still with us today, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, began as religions of scarcity, quite understandably, because they began in the desert. There's not enough resources around, we've got to take care of our own. In their more generous expressions, they've all moved beyond that. But if you look at their fundamentalist expressions, all three of them remain religions of scarcity. And to me, one of the most frightening things about all fundamentalism, wherever you find it, is goes back to what Edward O. Wilson, the sociobiologist at Harvard and MIT talks about. He says of the nine tribal species, species that have both what Richard Dawkins would call a selfish gene and a tribal gene, he says eight of them have behaved as they have evolved as you would expect. An enemy comes into the tribe, the tribe unites, defeats the enemy, life goes on. He said the ninth tribal species, he calls them eusocial species. He says has unfortunately evolved to believe that an enemy is necessary for the tribe to survive. So where no enemy exists, we create one. Wilson says we don't get a hold of that. We lose the species and probably lose the planet. And unfortunately, the most significant way in which we see that at play in the world is in fundamentalist religion, where consistently they create enemies that don't exist. I think part of that is fear. I think part of that is maintaining their power structures. If you think of Rene Girard's stuff about um, the mimetic theory, uh, you know, what better way to make sure you stay in power other than to find enemies within the camp that only I, from my position of power can identify. And we see that so much right now with over 300 laws pending, fighting or taking away the rights of transgender children. I, I just a few minutes ago finished a, a White House event with Pete Buttigieg and um, uh, Rachel Levine, where we were talking about the importance of the Equality Act in, in today, given what's happening in all of those states. Not something that that has to be dealt with in California or New York where I lived for 35 years or Colorado where I live now, but in 30 states, this is an issue. 